What's up guys? We are starting our new unit on boxes. And so there's a couple things that I want you to understand about boxes. So the first is that we can draw boxes in one point perspective where the, um, the front face is closest to us and the, the horizontals and verticals would be straight up and down and be parallel with each other. Um, you know, if I move this in one point perspective down here, you can kind of see a side plane and a top plane, um, but the face of the box remains flat to you. If I turn that box a little bit, it's now in two point perspective. What happens in two point perspective is all those uh, horizontals are now converging together off to the, the left side or off to the right side. However, the, um, the verticals are going to remain straight up and down, okay? Um, also pay attention to how thick the sides are. So like if I turn it like this, the edge is closest to us. Um, you can see that in, um, you know, so that the thickness of this side is not nearly as thick as that side because uh, this isn't in the center. If that edge becomes in the center, um, now both sides are about equal. Um, but the most dynamic is three-point perspective. If I basically turn this and the corner is the closest thing to you. Now you have three sets of converging lines because you have all of these lines that are converging, but now all of those verticals are also converging together. Um, and so that is going to uh, be the most dynamic. Um, and so let's take a look at our box, okay? We can draw this box if we think about, basically we wanna start in a corner. If we think about this uh, in terms of like a clock and um, so we can kind of put um, our pencil as if it were like the minute hand of the clock, you know, going around this corner. Um, if we kind of just ask ourselves, we know that three o'clock is completely horizontal. So we can kind of match that angle um, going up to draw it by telling us that maybe that's a two o'clock angle or a 130 um, angle. Um, it's probably more like a two o'clock angle down there, okay? So when you're drawing this, you're gonna start in the bottom corner and just kind of match that bottom angle, get that out. Then you're gonna come over here to the opposite side and do the same thing. So maybe that's like a 10 o'clock angle or maybe um, maybe it's a little bit higher. Maybe it's like a 1030 angle, okay? Um, and so, you know, coming out from there, it would be like that. Um, the one here just happens to be uh, 12 o'clock. Maybe even it's slightly turned back. Um, it might be like an 11... 1150 angle or something like that. Um, if it was straight up and down, it'd be a 12 o'clock angle, okay? Um, so you kind of want to just get those angles in. The other thing that can help you is looking at these corners. So if I look at this back corner here and I were to draw a straight line going across, I can say, okay, where, and that doesn't look that straight, but um, where does, let me redraw that because it's not good. Okay, that looks straighter. So where does that back corner, if I were to draw a straight line horizontally, where would it hit along this vertical? And I can see that, you know, maybe this is about halfway, and so it's hitting just below halfway. And so, um, you know, I drew that line out, maybe I extended it too far, but what I can do when I made this vertical is I could kind of come halfway, come about a little bit lower, and then go straight out. And when I hit or bisect those two, that tells me where that back corner is, okay? So once you find that, then you can kind of construct um, that other edge up. Um, and especially in three-point perspective, this is something that a lot of people get wrong. They, um, they tend to make these side, 
side angles, they try to draw them straight up and down, which in three-point perspective, they're going to converge or get closer together as they go down, okay? Um, so we can kind of get that, build that up. Same thing over here. We can do the exact same thing, find out where this corner is, go straight across. We can see that it's a little bit lower. It sits a little bit lower, so we just want to make sure that it's lower in our drawing. Do the same thing. Get that angle up. Um, once we kind of come up here, um, you know, we can look at the convergence. This is the other thing that <clears throat> we need to make sure that we get is that these three lines here converge or get closer together um, as they go left. In fact, it should look like um, they're all going. A lot of times people, especially this top one, struggle with and they kind of make it divergent. Um, and so if you get three pencils, you should have your drawing pencils. You can do like a little check like this and you just want to make sure that all three of them look like they are going to the same point. We can do the same thing on the opposite side as we draw those angles, okay? Converging together, they should be getting closer together. Um, please, please, please don't don't make your back line like that, okay? Um, that's probably one of the biggest things that um, that people struggle with on boxes. If you can just get those three sets of converging lines, uh, you are well on your way to making a box, okay? Um, the other thing. Um, that I wanted to show you is, um, you know, we have this kind of curved beveled edge here. Um, and so rather than these two coming to a strong point, what we want to do is we just kind of want to round that. Okay, want to round that edge. Um, and so um, when we're shading boxes, okay, uh, when we're shading boxes, we typically want to think in terms of light, middle, and dark. So in this case, our the B side would be our dark side. The top is our mid-tone, and uh, this left side face is our light. And so we want to um, just make sure that we ascribe those correct values. And we can do that uh, as we're laying these in. I can just kind of come over here kind of lay in a mid-tone across the top okay and what I did was um, and what I've been doing is I laid in um, a darker value here and then I'm going back in and just kind of building up the darks um, a little bit more in specific places where it's darker um, but on my dark side, notice how I don't have any like bright highlights um, and things like that. Uh, this top plane um, foreshortened elements are pretty tough to draw. Um, so f don't think about like what you're drawing, but look for shapes. Look for shapes of darks or um, highlights. Like if you can look here you can see that um, some of these edges are are dark but then they have kind of this highlighted edge and so uh, those highlights we can kind of erase at the end um, which is another reason that you might want to kind of just give a nice mid-tone across the top face of this box so that you're um, not dealing with white paper but that we could go back in and and erase out some of those highlights and make uh, make some of those edges actually pretty effective, okay? Um, so that is uh, pretty much it. Um, I'll keep working on this drawing, but you guys can get a block and, uh, and get going. Use your pencils to kind of figure out those angles, um, try to match them as best as possible. Look for relationships, push one side to be dark, mid-tone, and light. Okay? Good luck.